please tell us who you are and why we're here today. My name is Remy Mohammed, and I'm the Grenfell Project Coordinator for a charity called Inquest. Inquest is an independent charity. It was established in 1981 and we work with and support families of those that have been bereaved through some state action. Um, we are the only charity providing expertise in the investigation of deaths in situations like this and we have worked previously on Hillsborough, um, the Marchioness disaster, the 7-7 bombings and now the Grenfell Inquiry. We're at the um, Grenfell Inquiry today at um, Holborn Bars. Today's the first day since the recess in the summer. Can you tell us a bit more about what's going on today? We began today with a procedural hearing allowing lawyers representing bereaved survivors and residents and other core participants um, to make some legal submissions to assist the inquiry on how best to proceed um, in, in, in the days and weeks to come. So can you tell us what's going on um, this week at the inquiry? What's happening at uh, the inquiry this week? Well, following the um, procedural hearing, which we have just finished, um, we will continue with firefighters um, giving their evidence to the inquiry, and that will continue for the rest of the week. So can you explain to people who are uh, you know, not up to date with the inquiry um, how it works? My understanding is that there are two phases. Can you explain phase one? We are in phase one of the inquiry. Phase one began on the 21st of May um, with commemoration hearings um, and that was held in um, Gloucester Road. We then moved here on the 4th of June um, where the rest of the hearings have been held. Um, phase one will look at how the fire started and how it spread um, and the evacuation and response of the emergency services. Phase two is currently scheduled to begin in Easter of next year, um, although that is not set in stone yet and that could change. Um, and phase two will be looking at other aspects of what happened that night and the days after. So Remy, can you tell us a bit more about the open letter that Inquest um, sent to the uh, inquiry? Inquest work very closely with bereaved survivors and residents and also with lawyers representing them um, and it became apparent to us that there were some serious concerns um, about the inquiry. One main concern is the venue and that's been a concern from the outset and it's been mentioned today at the procedural hearing. The venue is inappropriate. Um, it's really difficult to get to for residents and the venue should be more local as it was for the commemoration hearings. Um, which began um, back in May. We are asking the inquiry to change the venue and go back to the Kensington area. We're also asking the inquiry to consider allowing lawyers representing bereaved survivors and residents to be able to ask questions um, that will encourage effective participation. At the moment, bereaved survivors and residents are watching their lawyers simply sit in silence at this inquiry. Um, they're passing up post-it notes as and when they need to, um, but we think it would be more appropriate for them to be able to ask questions as and when the need arises. And that's a discretion that the chair has um, under the inquiry rules. The final point, and I think it's a very important point that we're asking for, is disclosure of evidence. As Pete Weatherby QC today said in his legal submissions, only less than 5% of documents that have been obtained by the inquiry team have actually been disclosed to core participants, and that is a staggeringly low percent. Um, we are asking for full and prompt disclosure to ensure transparency in the process and to ensure that core participants have all the evidence they need to be able to ask effective questions of the inquiry. Thank you very much for your time.